Good morning, good morning. April 16, 2022. This is the 16th day out of our 21 day fasting. Um, definitely took a third day off, which was yesterday on the Friday, on the 15th day I didn't exercise. Uh, I didn't want to beat myself up. It's one of those situations that I was like, you know what? Whatever I didn't get done yesterday, I just push it forward to today. I'm gonna still take it as a missing day. Um, and just keep it going, you know. We're almost there, which is like five more days of, of you know, all the way up to the 21 days. Um, 20 reps, everything. We're gonna get into that. Continue on the Shahrazad Ali, Black Men's Guide to Understanding Black Women. Um, at the end of the video, I'm gonna just, you know, say some, some extra words like I always do. But this one is just. I can't even say it's different, just something bringing awareness on a matter. So I'm gonna say that at the end of the video. So uh, let's get started, why not, all right? 20 reps, everything. The black man cannot pattern his life in such a way as to have time or memory to constantly remind the black woman that he loves her. Love is not a sentence, it is a demonstration. If the black woman doubts that her man loves her, the doubt grows. It does not matter after that what the man tries to do or what he says, she will remain unhappy. A black woman who is relaxed at home, cooking, planning a loving welcome for her man, making a dress or icing a cake, is far happier than a black woman sitting at home alone under great duress waiting on the phone to ring, trying to figure out how to find a man, or chewing her nails off, wondering where he is. There is no comparison if contentment and happiness is the goal. The black woman's natural instincts have become so polluted and distorted that she has rejected the plan that works for the one that fails. She is on the wrong path and insists on stumbling on. It should be black people's greatest collective hope that at some point the total effect of the mind tampering during enslavement is understood. The genetic psychological damage done to blacks in slavery has been forgotten as lightweight action that's over and past. It's much more serious and long lasting than that. It has caused the people to be morally estranged from their past. The black woman must be reminded of her duties and the black man must stop settling for the jumbled ideas she expresses. She must accept her basic ideas from the black man and improve on them instead of rejecting them in the name of having her own way. It has been proven that she does not know what she wants, nor how to get the things she claims she does want. A big degree, a big job, a big car, and a big bank account does not compete with a big, beautiful black man. No way, no day. The black man has allowed himself to be devalued by black women who rank among the most confused species of humanhood on the planet Earth. The black man knows that she is confused about many topics, and the black woman knows that he knows. But until she is stopped and called to order, she believes herself powerless to control how she is. Her first career must be to raising her family and completing the rearing work necessary to improve the black nation. This work cannot be done by anyone else, no matter what they say they represent. Yes. Times are moving fast, it seems, and the black woman's previous steady and sturdy values have evaporated into the storm of American social politics. The black woman has attempted to grow and evolve like the white woman, except their history is not the same. The black woman's growth has been retarded and thwarted because she is trying to live her black life based on the values and standards of white light. She justifies all this based on her anger towards the black man for not defending himself. 
it's entirely possible that hidden someplace in the black woman's psyche is a tremendous fury and loss of confidence in the black man because he was unable to protect her during slavery. Slavery robbed the black man of his natural right to provide and protect his family. Again, she doesn't know what he should have done to stop slavery, but she thinks he should have done something. Of course, there was nothing he could do. He felt as victimized as she, and his brain was equally wounded. The black woman's pain and frustration is so great that the only vent she pursues for release is to fight against the black man, the only man who really loves her. She battles tooth and nail in a fight that she cannot win and one that destroys her spirit and makes her ugly to look at. It is difficult to get her to listen to new information about a new approach to living her life because she is so certain that she is justified in being out of order. She knows that she is difficult to tangle with, but she thinks that this is what the black man deserves for being so out of order himself. Part of her discomfort is that she thinks she has the solutions to the black man's problems if he would only listen to her. By nature, the black man cannot submit to the woman. When she considers the problems of the black man, she continually looks outward. She lists oppression, depression, and obsession as part of his failings. She compiles lists filled with such topics as joblessness, lack of political clout, lack of historical knowledge, poor education, missing father image, and a host of other external mishaps that result in the black man being disenfranchised. It never occurs to her to look internally at herself and see what her role is in the black man's plight. If and when she does examine herself, she comes out clean. She can find no fallacy in her that helps keep the black man down. Confidentiality and trust. Black women reveal all of the black man's personal business to her friends. If the black man has any special information he tells his woman in confidence, you can be sure that her best friend or her family members know too. She takes a special glee in letting her friends know the most intimate details and secrets, even his antics in bed and anything else of a personal and confidential nature. She does not consider that a confidence has been violated, nor that it is unfair to the black man who entrusted her with the information. No black woman ever tells another black woman that she is wrong to tell her man's business to the public. This process is an agreed and acceptable dialogue among black women. It is also certain that some of the information she tells her girlfriends ends up getting whispered into the ears of her girlfriend's man. The black man is betrayed twice this way. His business is all over town and he doesn't even know it. She tells everything, everything. No subject is too private or too sacred. Many black men think that the black woman is trustworthy with his most innermost secrets, but she is not, and she expresses no guilt about it. Such is the warped agreement between black women and part of their secret society with mutually agreed upon rules and bylaws. This is a woman-only club that thrives daily. The membership consists of single and married women. They all do the same thing. They tell. Whenever the black woman suspects that her black man has shared their business with another man or his family, she becomes appalled. How could he do such a thing? Black men who tell are looked down upon with special disdain. She thinks that a man is just not supposed to do this. She is a hypocrite. She has become so adept at attacking the black man for whatever she decides is a good reason that she functions as if he is her open enemy and she packs an arsenal of ammunition to shoot him down at every turn. She is calculating every word he says and every move he makes, examining him to figure out ways to get him to do what she wants him to do. These constant calculations leave little time for positive discoveries of ways to drop her defenses and let her man lead the way. 
It is not easy for a black man to be motivated if his woman doubts him or if their relationship is so stormy that it takes his head and robs him of the ability to concentrate. For some black men, his woman is the only thing wrong in his life. She has broken his spirit deep in his heart. Some have developed what appears to be a startling attitude about the black woman being out of order. They have started to accept her disagreeable behavior as the norm and cooperate with her ignorance because he does not think he has any alternative. So many black men have commenced to saying they want a black woman who is one, financially independent, two, her own person, three, can do things on her own and doesn't count on me for everything, four, who makes her own decisions, five, is a professional career woman, six, likes to have a good time without becoming attached. This is not what the black man really wants, but he sees no sense in swimming upstream against the apparent current if he wants to have a woman. It is obvious to him that the black woman wants a separate independent life while claiming she wants peace and unity with the black man. It is impossible for those two aspirations to occupy the same space or be targeted at the same object at one time. One cannot have separation and unity simultaneously. The real black man does not want a woman who professes any of the six aforementioned ideas. In his heart, he does not want this in his woman, but he too is convinced that this is his only option if he wants to be with her. And he has proven that he wants to be with her. On closer examination of the six postures of the new breed black woman, it is found that one, financially independent black women make life easier on the black man because her wants and desires are so excessive and times are so difficult for a black man to earn enough money to support a wife and family that he generally agrees that it is a good idea if she has her own money. He doesn't have enough for himself. He would much rather be the breadwinner in charge of the money. But if he has a woman who makes outrageous demands on his wallet, he can't compete. He knows she will never be satisfied with his provisions and therefore gives up his rightful place as chief of finance and budget. Two, Quote, her own person means she demands total control of her own decision-making processes. It is part of her hard-earned independence. Anything he tells her to do or any advice he renders comes under careful scrutiny. Many times a black woman will do the direct opposite of what the black man tells her to do just to prove to him that he can't boss her around. Repetitive rejection. Right. So definitely, straight off the bat, um, the rip right imperfection on me. Put a new uh, band on it on the last video it popped, and that thing is it's tough, but something to push through, something to be aware of, strength. Uh, but I'm putting a stamp on imperfection because you know the goal there is to go to 10 all the way down to 1 that is the goal but uh keep on putting practice on that muscle area the legs is fine the, the abs are fine so morning workout was pretty good overall I'm thinking before I speak because um, it's a continuing thing, you know. If it wasn't yesterday or the day before, I don't know what when it happened, but it happened. Uh, another brother, another um, individual took the time to end his ex-wife and his own daughter. The ex-wife had uh, three kids, if I'm not mistaken. One older daughter, 
two younger sons and uh, they've been divorced approaching two years uh, or I don't know when the time frame but I know they've been divorced the news has shared that they've been separated uh, for two years so um, it's one thing to say okay divorce move on but then you have a fat well have a family where it's a daughter and two sons so it's like you still there's still some kind of effort to speak to the mother or your ex-wife to the kids it, I don't know it's a, it's a whole crazy system in that but whatever it is a tipping point I'm pretty sure he wasn't breathing properly I'm pretty sure he didn't care about anything else in the world but that moment taking somebody else's life away and um, his daughter now prior to that crazy story in that family in that family relationship the news shared that you know or somebody shared that there was domestic violence throughout the relationship so that's why they had a divorce and you know she tried her best to move on which you know she did but he didn't so to bring this up is even mentioning I don't know, I, I think deep like this. For me to mention mentioning these these videos that I'm making, like hey, domestic violence is still out there, something that's been going on for quite a few times, that's still happening today. Still so you think it'll be like, man, we're all adults now, get over it type of deal, but you know, stay out of people business. Uh there, there's there's a way to approach this and the way to approach it is let's talk about it the way to approach approach this are you journaling are you meditating are you breathing properly if somebody pisses you off you know one minute you're cool next minute you're like enraged ready to knock down somebody or take their life away you know I think we call it, you know, we, we have the labels of good and evil, or God and evil, and the good and the bad. Whoever's listening, give a chance to study or identify the bad. What makes things bad? What makes things evil? You know, uh, and the, the reason why I bring that up because it's like we are focus on the good focus on godly righteous things whatever but we still vulnerable you still vulnerable in the sense that something potentially not to say it's going to happen guaranteed but something potentially could come your way and you're not prepared for it because you've been focusing on so much of the good you know uh, self-defense coming to my mind there's self-defense uh, classes out there there's uh, criminals on YouTube that kind of share their perspective of why they did what they did. Um, it is it is pretty annoying. It, it does, you, you do cringe when you do hear their story. You know, it's like, man, it's like you could have chose a better way versus creating, creating a crime. But, um, you know, that's, a piece of what I call harmony where you know you understand the good you're doing righteously and then you understand the bad so it's like in the middle is harmony because now you're looking at both sides like okay now I know how to manage both but if you just ignoring like man that's too much get away from me and whatever like trouble still find its way for some reason somehow trouble still find its way to come around you know because it wasn't properly looked at whatever that means to you so for the for the brother that and his ex-wife and his own daughter you know that's not right it's not right man you know uh, you got to be accountable for your actions um, no one your mother
mother, father, even if they're not your mother or father, even if you was grown up without a mother and father, no one should be able to put you in a place out of your element to hurt someone else, end their life, anything. So it's upon everyone's self-awareness, self-love to take actions like, you know what? I know for me, free promotion for them, it is what it is. Facebook is not for me, it's not. I've, I've done the Facebook 10 years, whatever, see everybody different lives and all that different opinion stuff. It's time to take my own actions. You know, Instagram is not for me. I see everybody double tapping and it's not for me. McDonald's, free promotion, it's not for me. You know, finding ways to cook, cook, you know, and I could go a whole list of things that is just like, that wave, that wave of what people are doing to hurt themselves and hurt others. Um, I'm a, I'm a fit this in. It may not make sense. But I'm gonna still say it because I really want like put everything in an organized way. But sometimes it doesn't lead that way to be organized. You just have to say it when you when you can. But I really think. We gotta fight through our addictions, uh, the anger. We gotta know how to breathe properly in this world. Um, the salts and the sugars. Uh, the reason why I bring up the salt and the sugar is that some, there's a crave in the sugar that if you don't get what you want, it's like it becomes an addiction. You can't wait to have that. I don't know if it's a sugar rush, you just can't wait to have that crave again. So, our body does need a checklist. Our mental state does need a checklist. I think the checklist could be once a month, every three months, every six months. Once a year is fine. Every other three years, it's too, it's too, it's too many years, too much, too much time gone by. You need a checklist to check yourself, check check your awareness, check your love, check, just check. Make sure everything is still good. It's a long list, but at least do like 70, 70 to 80 percent of it. So um, I'm I'm slightly all over the place right now, but I hope what I'm saying is making sense. You know, I've mentioned in previous videos, I said again that I've been in situations that wanted to take me to that tipping point. But I'm thankful that this mind, because I am talking to myself during that space of time, like, is it really, what is the next 10, 20 steps if I really take on this action that I might regret doing? Because I'm gonna just be in his mind, that, that dude, that brother mind, for just for a split second, like, you had this rage to take take over your, you know, and your ex-wife life and your daughter. But then when you did it, like, what's the feeling after that? I know it's still adrenaline because now it's like you're trying to run away from the law. But now it's like, she's not here anymore. Your daughter's not here anymore. So it's like, if you could have avoided that from the beginning, do some self-work. And I know there's thoughts like, you know, he might not know what that self-worth is, I understand. You know, I know there's thoughts out there that saying, you know, he don't know any better. I understand. You know, I know there's probably thoughts out there like, you know, uh, he had nothing to lose. I understand. Trust me. I definitely do understand. What I do understand that for some reason when these individuals have the proper knowledge, the proper access to resources, the self-confidence, 
awareness. Um, the eating habits, gotta eat properly. Get away from the fast food, eat properly. The discipline, Lent season is a discipline season. Um, that's from, <clears throat> that's what I'm taking from Lent season, from Ash Wednesday to Easter, discipline. So I use everything, my fast, all of that to handle the rest of the year of the, of the world, which I'll be okay. I know I'll be okay. So discipline, if, if you haven't done Lent, do Lent, give Lent a try. Because I'm pretty sure if a mag magnitude of people could just have a season of discipline, you have your Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, summertime, all these special holidays. A Lent see all of these days is upon you, what you want to do with yourself in your life. I understand that. But have a season of discipline. What is what's what 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 month of the year is that time you have discipline where you just cut away from the drinking cut away from the holding a gun ready to kill somebody uh hurt somebody i should say proper words because even using that word is a trigger uh hurting somebody um discipline of just hey you have five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars you're ready to spend it or, or just hold that money for this season just hold it um unfortunately it's one of the most not top craving sex hold off from sex uh anything that kind of brings that kind of addiction social media hold up on so Lent season is to me is that discipline season shouldn't we shouldn't have to cut on the TV and say man if we go again somebody a man even if they're not in a relationship a man think a man and someone else like somewhere you know and if it comes up again next year come around it's like man I know last year I didn't hurt nobody this year I want to hurt somebody again okay then let's see what's the reason why let's dig deeper if it's a genetic thing a mental thing whatever like what is your family history a lot of things can really identify what's going on So with that being said, I'm um, gonna end on that. Um, and you know, you guys just take care. Yesterday was definitely a peaceful day. Today is gonna be a peaceful day. Tomorrow is gonna be a peaceful day. Um, you guys have a great one, okay? Take care. <laughs>